So no, it is not this matrix being created, set up, and then we the people are pushed into it. We actually play a major role in this matrix, whether if it is created, what kind of a matrix it is, and if it's going to be easy to be thrown inside this matrix. It's not about being powerless, but when you have these types of crises, now I'm not gonna get into it right now about man-made crises, organic, planned, or all sorts of theories out there. When during crises, okay, these decisions are made on our behalf, and we have sat back silently watching it happen, whether because we have been ridden by this panic, by this hysteria, or because we have given up and we think, hey, we have nothing to do with it. There's nothing we can do to change it. Everything is preset and it's going to happen no matter what. But let's talk about coronavirus. Let's talk about the matrix that is likely to be created. Let's learn from experience. Let's use our collective knowledge, our collective knowledge of history, experiences, and be vigilant now and get ahead of the decisions that are going to be made based on this pandemic, okay? And it's going to be in place not for a couple of months when the virus and the hysteria is calmed down, but it's going to stay in place forever. Well, in order to have a global test, to get real data, they can't do this thing, the powers, the globalists, inside a lab. And when you're looking at major, major plans, it is not that easy to sit and put it on the paper and put some statistical chance. They need to have harder data. They need to have facts. Enter mass well-planned drill. Because take a look at the data they are right now collecting. The globalists. They know exactly how many percent of people in country A, country B, country C gave into panic, hysteria. You know, I'm not talking about only toilet paper buying. All these behaviors, they are observable. And they are real, factual data. It's not guesswork. It's not the statistics. But surveys, it's like surveys out there. It's like how many are willing right now to take the coronavirus uh, flu shot without it being the vaccination, without being mandatory? They are gathering that data right now. When you start thinking this way, then you know that you and I, we the people, we are not just the observers here and the things are happening to us and we are being thrown inside this matrix set for us. Our reaction today, our way of thinking, going to determine how hard things are going to be pushed, how far they are going to be pushed, Knowing that alone should provide us with enough incentive to say, don't give them that and get ahead of it. We're going to live in it. This matrix has to do with us. Don't have them determine it for us. Don't act as if they are determining it for us. Be vigilant. Engage in critical thinking and don't feel powerless. And this time is global. Many, many countries, whether it's going to be their Congress, like in the United States, or a parliament, or their dictator, or their semi-dictator, everyone, those people in power, are looking to see how they are going to use this coronavirus and the related hysteria the related panic 
and quickly put in place things that will be permanent, whether they are police state practices, whether they are business profit related moves. Pay attention now. You don't want to come into the picture later. So let's talk about that. You really, let's talk about that. Hello everyone, this is the Bell Edmonds with Newsbud. This is an unusual video. This is not a news report. This is not really a, any kind of an analysis. Just a couple of a couple of days ago, I tweeted a statement regarding how I feel and what my position is on coronavirus. As everybody now is talking about coronavirus, and I see that for some reason it resonated with many of you. And uh, actually, I'm so glad because I got some amazing replies from you, uh, great comments, and it made me feel actually a lot better um, and more hopeful. Uh, this video, this session is just a casual chat. And uh, during this conversation, um, I'm going to give you my humble opinion about what is important. What are the important things we need to be paying attention to? And this is not on the medical side of it, no. It's not on the scientific side of it, no. It is mainly um, the political aspects of it, the um, societal aspect of it, and the kinds of warnings that, that people should be paying attention to on um, what the consequences can be. And we see some of the signs, a few of these signs already glaringly, but also to remind ourselves to remember the fact that we, the people, we play a role. And uh, usually I see these um, videos or conversations on the social media that takes it as if the matrix we are in is completely made, set up, and put in place, and we are just placing it, and we have nothing to do with it. I want to talk about the fact that no, no, actually, with we actually influence the matrix. No matter how powerful certain interests, you don't make decisions during panic, fear, in the midst of crisis, when you're overridden by or bombarded by all different types of information. And as we know with the media, creating this panic fear factor. Usually the decisions we make or the decisions we accept happen to be the worst ones in our lives and they prove to be really bad. Why? Because this is when we step out of that rational zone, logical thinking, critical thinking, and we engage in knee-jerk reaction, uh, panic-induced reaction, and uh, that's not the time to make decision. It's not a good time for those types of long-term decision for us, and certainly it is not for our political heads, no matter where you are in the world, which country you are in, whether it's the Congress in the United States, whether it's the Parliament in the United Kingdom, it doesn't make a difference. Um, during crisis, hasty decisions with long-term consequences and passing laws uh, is not a good idea. I'm not talking about certain measures and regulations that has to do with an issue that is temporary. And as long as it is dated, it is said that it is going to be temporary for two months and it's going to automatically expire. A good example of this would be uh, vaccination. Okay, uh, A lot of major players are talking about vaccination for coronavirus. And um, I just read the headline. In fact, it's right here. And it says, we've got the vaccine, says Pentagon funded company. And this is a company in Canada fully funded by uh, Pentagon. So they are saying that 
they came up with this method that would allow them to create this vaccine based on the genetic code that was given to them on this particular coronavirus uh, and, and it will be out by with FDA ap approval pending very soon. Okay, we all expected that. Oh, all right. Now, how long are these companies going to test this? The long-term consequences of such vaccines? Well, your guess is as good as mine. Uh, the important thing about this is uh, those of us who are rational and, and I mean I say those of us who are rational about this coronavirus thing, I'm talking about people who consider and reconsider all the other hard facts, data, statistics. To put this whole coronavirus case, the issue, in perspective. Is it really that dangerous and deadly? Let's look at the number of deaths. Let's compare it to other flus. Let's compare it to other causes of that. And let's look at who are the people who are getting infected. How many percent of them actually are dying? That helps us put this entire case of coronavirus in perspective. So that's the first step we should be taking. We should be all engaged in that and then take a deep breath and maybe even a smile because just the whole action of engaging in some smile, even if it's forced, already lifts some other gray black clouds and makes, makes you actually think clearer. And then say, ah, this is really getting blown out of proportion. And, and the reaction to this particular case is completely out of proportion based on, based on data, based on facts, based on the or readily available statistics. So that's the first step. The second is be alert and vigilant, not only about, oh, I'm going to catch coronavirus and here's what I should do what kind of decisions will be made on your behalf that you and I, all of us, will be living with consequences for a long time. I remember with the 9-11, the it happened, it took place, and within a couple of weeks, we started passing laws like Patriot Act. We changed our constitution, replaced it with police state practices. We legitimized practices that we never thought we would ever see implemented in the United States. It happened very quickly. Some people wanted it to happen very quickly. When people are ridden by panic, ridden with fear, they are hysterical. They want to see action, any kind of action. And during this moments of crisis, pass, put in place laws that within a month or a year will come to look at and say, whoa, what happened here? Look, 18 years later and they are still in place. Let's use that experience. Let's use that as a very good example. Let's learn from experience because during this hysteria, and media also constantly fanning it, actually creating it to a, to a certain degree, there will be passing laws. And we know when Congress passes laws, the laws that actually is good for, for a handful of people, the 0.001% out there, those laws from experience tells us they are here to stay. They're not going to go. They are not going to go. So pay attention. Pay attention. Not after the fact. Pay attention now. And a, a good again example of it is this vaccination. That's why I brought up this vaccination example. <clears throat> because I was talking with my family members and friends and I said, will you take the vaccination? I mean, they haven't even had time to test it, to establish long-term effect, consequences. 
And the immediate response was, hell no, no, we're not going to, I'm not going to do that. But then I said, what if, and this is not a unlikely what if, what if with laws that will be passing soon by Congress in the United States, by parliaments of many countries, what if the law says, okay, you have a choice, you don't have to take it, however, if your child hasn't been vaccinated for coronavirus, she cannot attend schools. And if you haven't taken coronavirus, haven't received coronavirus vaccination, you're forbidden, you're on a no-fly list, and you're forbidden from taking flights, whether internally in your country or internationally. Well, that changed their response like this because my kid can't go to school? Wait a second. I guess I have to take it then. These are the types of laws I'm talking about that will be passing. And this time, we are, it's not only 9-11 uh, and the United States, we are looking at a global scale consequences. Each country's power, each country's government is going to use utilize, misuse, and abuse coronavirus. And same with the political uh, class, the elite. And they are going to put in place uh, these types of conditions and laws. And it is not going to do any good if you were to scream about it later. It is not going to do any good if we go back and regret later. This is the time to pay attention. This is the time to be vigilant. This is the time, whether it's going to do much good or not, to place pressure, put pressure on your representatives in whatever countries you're in. Don't be this very silent minority. I'm talking about the rational people, and I'm sorry, I consider them to be the minority. Don't be the silent minority. Raise your voice now. Be vigilant now. You don't want to face the consequences after the fact. That pretty much wraps up what I wanted to talk about. As I said, I see a lot of sites. Yes, we have the media. They are putting out all the stuff on coronavirus and the fear factors. And then we have, of course, the other group, you know, they, they consider themselves independents or alternative medias, and they are churning up one theory after another theory without the education, without the expertise, and they are actually pumping more fear. And they put out these things saying, oh, this is being done by Soros, or this is being done by Trumpsters, or this is being done by Rockefellers. <clears throat> it's for this it's already high at the high, high, high level. The, the panic, the confusion by the majority, don't fan it by putting BS and destructive uh, content out there. Let's put aside everything. I am not a scientist. Probably majority of you who are right now watching this, you are not. I'm not talking about the medical aspects. Let's talk about, based on our collective experience, let's talk about this based on our knowledge of collective knowledge of history. Let's engage in critical thinking, rational thinking, logical thinking process, and question things. Be vigilant about the decisions that are going to be made on our behalf in various countries, in where we live. And let's try to unite, regardless of our parties, or nationality, or race, or gender, and say, let's form a cohesive united front and do the best that we can to prevent another Patriot Act, a souped-up Patriot Act, uh, something that we have to live with and our children are going to live with. It's going to go beyond, probably it's going to go beyond the pat-downs in the, in the uh, airports. 
And even though it may be a temporary virus panic and conditions, once they pass it, it is here to stay no matter which country, what country you live in. So please be vigilant about that aspect and let us unite and let us form a united front and try to prevent that. This is Sabelle Edmonds and not really reporting, but chatting via news Thank you.